the KMNN studios, this is the Kids Morning News Network. Good morning, friends. It's October 16th, 2024, the 290th day of the year. Welcome to the Kids Morning News Network podcast. I'm Alex in the KMNN studio. It's Global Cat Day. Yes, the cats have a day. And while I'm sure it's not enough for them, the rest of us can take a minute or 1,440 minutes, which is how many are in a day, and appreciate the felines in our lives. Cats have an amazing history that goes back thousands of years. It all started about 9,000 years ago in the Middle East, one of the first places where humans began farming and storing grain. The stored grain attracted mice, and wild cats started to come closer to villages to hunt the rodents. People realized that these cats were helpful in controlling pests, so they began to allow them to stick around. Over time, the cats became less wild and more friendly toward humans, And this is how the domestication of cats likely began. Although, you know, I asked a couple of cats I know, special cat correspondents Spots and Sid, about this, and they said it was the cats that let humans hang around. But I guess we just have to agree to disagree there. In ancient Egypt, cats became incredibly important. They were loved for their ability to kill rats and snakes, and they were treated like much more than pets. Egyptians believed that cats were magical and protective, and they even worshipped a cat goddess. I asked Spots and Sid about this too, and they said, yeah, they are gods. As trade and exploration grew, cats spread around the world. They became popular in Europe and Asia because of their ability to catch mice and protect food that people were storing. However, in some places during the Middle Ages, cats were sometimes associated with witches, which caused people to fear them. Thankfully, this mistaken view didn't last, and people eventually started to love cats again for their companionship. Today, cats are one of the most popular pets in the world. There are over, get this, 500 million domesticated cats. They continue to be loved for their independence, their playful behavior, and their hunting skills. So happy Global Cat Day, cats, and thanks for letting us hang out with you. In a couple of weeks, there's this little shindig you might have heard of called, what is it again here? Oh, here it is. Halloween. Have you heard of it? Costumes, candy. It's great and all, but where did it come from? Well, the tradition of wearing Halloween costumes goes back more than 2,000 years. Not quite as old as cats, but impressive nonetheless. It all started with the ancient Celtic festival, Celts are people from around Scotland, Ireland, and Wales, of Samhain, which sounds kind of funny and looks even funnier since it's spelled more like Sam Hain. Anyway, Samhain marked the end of the harvest in the fall and the beginning of winter. The Celts believed that on the night of October 31st, the boundary between the living and the dead was at its thinnest, allowing spirits to roam the earth. To protect themselves from these spirits, people would wear costumes, often made from animal skins, to disguise themselves and avoid being recognized by the ghosts. Later, when Christianity spread across Europe, Samhain traditions mixed with All Hallows' Eve, which was the night before the Christian holiday, All Saints' Day. People began dressing up as saints and angels and even devils as part of those celebrations. In the 19th century, which was the 1800s, when Irish and Scottish immigrants came to the United States, they brought these customs with them. Over time, the costumes became less about scaring away spirits and more about fun. By the 1900s, dressing up for Halloween had become a popular tradition for both kids and some adults in America and other places. 
with costumes now ranging from spooky characters to superheroes and more. So Halloween costumes started as a way to hide from ghosts, and now they're a way to be a ghost or anything else you want. Call it a celebration of imagination with candy. There was a really cool rocket launch in Texas this week. Well, I mean, every rocket launch is cool. And actually, what came after this launch was even cooler. SpaceX launched the biggest and most powerful rocket ever. The Starship, which is 400 feet high, as tall as a 40-story building. It's got 33 rocket engines to blast it into the sky. When it gets high enough, the second stage launches away and the 232-foot-high booster falls back to Earth. Now, Starship has launched four times, and every time it's either blown up or fallen into the ocean and sunk. But the idea behind them is that they should be recyclable. So this week, for the first time, a Starship booster went up and then came back down to be recycled. And the plan sounds like it would be pretty tough to do. Have the rocket come back down, still standing straight up, and then have a giant pair of pinchers up on a tower catch it in the air. What? They call the pinchers chopsticks, and they actually worked. The huge, flaming, scary-looking Starship booster slid down right between the chopsticks, which closed and caught it before it could touch the ground. And now that booster can be used again. It's really amazing and a big step towards Starship doing what it was created for, taking people to the moon and then to Mars. Stay tuned. On this day in 1869, workers in Cardiff, New York, made what became a world-famous and potentially world-changing archaeological discovery. While they were digging a well, they found a 10-foot-tall man who had been petrified, turned to stone, like trees sometimes are. Amazing, right? Word got out quickly, and people started to come from all around to see the giant. The farmer whose land it was found on, named Stub Newell, said he just wanted to bury it again and forget about it. His neighbors had to convince him that maybe he had something valuable. And he did. Stubbs started charging the visitors to see the giant, and hundreds of people came every day. This was out in the country, but the hotels and restaurants nearby filled up. It made headlines in the newspapers. Scientists examined the man, but they couldn't agree on whatever it was. Was it a statue carved by ancient residents of the area, or in fact a fossilized giant? Eventually, a group of investors, people who wanted to make their own money from it, bought the giant for more than half a million dollars in today's money. What a story, right? Except some neighbors remembered seeing Stubb's cousin come through town with a huge box the year before. One visitor, who was a professor, pointed out that there was no reason to dig a well on a farm that had plenty of water. And someone else noted that gypsum, the kind of rock that the giant was made from, would have dissolved after years underground. Yep, it was all fake. Stub Newell's cousin cooked up an elaborate hoax, or lie, to fool people. He bought the stone in Iowa and had it carved in Chicago so no one would know where it came from, and then rubbed it with sand and chemicals to make it look old. And for a while, it worked. Today, you can still see the Cardiff Giant at the Farmer's Museum in Cooperstown, New York, which is also home to the Baseball Hall of Fame. It's riddle time. Last week's riddle was a cowboy rode into town on Friday. He stayed for three nights and then he rode out on Friday. How? Well, because his horse is named Friday. 
Today's riddle is, why are teddy bears never hungry? Why are teddy bears never hungry? I will give you the answer next Wednesday, but you've got to make sure you follow or subscribe to the Kids Morning News Network podcast so you don't miss it. Do you like being outside? Do you like animals? Taking pictures? Well, then this is for you. The London Natural History Museum announced its 2024 Young Wildlife Photographer of the Year. And the winner is, drum roll please, Alexis Tinker Savalas of Germany. The teenager took a picture of a springtail, which is kind of related to insects, and the fruiting body of a slime mold, which kind of looks like a mushroom. If none of those sound familiar, it's because we don't usually see them. They're tiny, and they live under logs on the forest floor. And to top it off, springtails are amazing jumpers. It's hard to even get them in a picture. But Alexis is a master of what's called macro photography. That's photographer speak for getting close up shots of very small things. He said he got his camera ready, rolled a log over and shot his pictures before the springtail had a chance to jump away, getting not one, but two tiny rare creatures in the shot. And like any great photographer, he gives us a chance to see the world in a different way. One of the greatest tennis players in history, Rafael Nadal, has said he will retire from the game after this season. He grew up in Spain and first became a professional tennis player in 2001 when he was just 14. Two years later, he made it to the third round at Wimbledon, which you might know is like the Tennis World Series. And at that point, he was 16, one of the youngest players to make it that far. By 2005, still in his teens, he was the number two player in the world. And he's been a champion ever since. The past couple of years have been tough for him, though. He's mostly missed playing because of injuries. Other than tennis, he likes a lot of things anyone else does, video games, movies, and reading. And even though he's a tough competitor on the tennis court, Rafael Nadal is actually afraid of things just like anyone else, including thunderstorms, deep water, and the dark. He likes the nightlight. Over his years playing, he has also become famous for all the work he does for people who need help. In fact, it's been said that Rafael Nadal is one of the most generous athletes in the world. So congratulations on an amazing career, a champion on and off the court. Well, that's the show. Thank you very much for listening this week. Please follow or subscribe to the Kids Morning News Network on your podcast player, your podcast app, your smart device, or whatever you used to listen to this episode. I will be back next Wednesday, and I hope that you are too. From the KMNN Newsroom, this is Alex, signing off. <laughs>